Good morning, kindergartners. Today I have a really nice story for you. Um, it's a beautiful story with lots of wonderful pictures. It's called Harriet by Deborah Inkpen. What do you see on the cover? What do you think that is? A basket with eggs? What is this? Hmm. A little hamster? Who do you think is holding the basket? Do you think that this hamster should be in the basket? I wonder. I wonder if this person knows about the hamster. Hmm. Do any of you have any small pets at home? I know Jackson's getting a puppy dog this Friday. I saw dogs at Miguel's house and Henry's house. Do some of you have pets? Some pets that are big like dogs and some pets are tiny like hamsters in cages. Well, let's read this story and find out about Harriet by Deborah Inkpen. Ooh, these pages are crisp. Harriet by Deborah Inkpen. Harriet had escaped her cage. Her cage was old. Some of the bars were bent. She had gnawed at them with her teeth, pushed at them with her paws, and eventually they had moved just enough. And now she was free. Before her lay a huge carpet of green. Above her giant plants spread their leafy fingers and over them all stretched the blue sky. Harriet's whiskers quivered, her nose twitched. The air was full of new sounds and new smells. She scampered along the garden path, nosing this way and that. A dark shadow passed above her. Harriet scurried for cover. The shadow flew into a tree and started to sing. What do you think made the shadow? The bird? A rich earthy scent led Harriet into the vegetable patch. She nibbled a spiky leaf. It tasted strange. Then she nibbled some lettuce. That tasted good. The carrots and the cabbages were good too, but she didn't like the slugs. They were horrible. What's a slug? This little guy, it's like a snail without a shell. Harriet paused to sniff the air. A weedy, watery smell made her feel thirsty. She followed the smell to the edge of a murky pond. As she leaned over to drink, a big warty toad popped up its head. Harriet jumped and went plummeting into the pond. Plop! The little hamster bobbed to the surface like a cork. The water was cold and full of green, slimy weed that clung to her fur. Gasping and spluttering, she paddled to the edge and scrambled out. A tiny, soggy, angry heap of fur. The tiny heap of fur shook itself smoothed down its coat, cleaned its whiskers, and turned back into a little hamster. Harriet yawned sleepily. Here's a good place to sleep, thought Harriet. Under the apple tree were lots of small holes. Something disappeared into one of them. She peered down the hole. A small face looked out. It stared at Harriet with black, beady eyes. What's 
against that. Hmm. You can't come in here, said a little gray mouse. Only mice live here. You're not a mouse, said another. You haven't got a tail. What are you, asked a third. Harriet told them that she was a hamster and that she did have a tail. She turned around to show them. They seemed unimpressed. There's no room for hamsters here, they said. Only mice. And they vanished down their hole. Harriet tried sleeping inside a flower pot but the cobwebs stuck to her whiskers. The watering can made scary echoing noises and a funny old glove looked inviting, but it smelled musty. Near the apple tree was a compost heap. Harriet nosed her way inside. It was dark and warm. Perhaps this will be a good place to sleep, she thought, but she had not seen the large prickly shape buried under the leaves. The hedgehog did not like being awakened. It uncurled itself, grunting angrily, and it rushed at Harriet. Harriet ran across the open lawn, tripping and rolling and running again, some wire netting blocking her path. She pushed her nose underneath and wriggled through. Scrambling up the side of a low wooden shed, she found herself on the roof. She scampered this way and that, looking for a place to hide. Under the eaves was a dark hole. Harriet scrambled through and tumbled into darkness. A huge, foolish-faced creature flapped its wings and rushed around the coop. Harriet dived beneath a nest of warm eggs and watched as hens scattered in every direction. Gradually, the noise died down. The air began to clear. A big, fat, feathery body plumped down on top of her. She snuggled back, feeling safe and warm, and at last she fell asleep. Harriet did not awaken when the hen left the nest. She did not awaken when chubby fingers began to collect the eggs, nor did she awaken when a delighted voice squealed. <gasps> there you are, Harriet! The sleepy little hamster was placed carefully into an egg basket. Come on then, said the voice, let's take you home. But Harriet did not hear, she did not even stir. And that is the end. Who found Harriet? Who do you think this is from the cover of the book? Who found Harriet? Do you think that's the person who takes care of Harriet? Harriet might be their pet? Mm -hmm. They sounded very excited when they saw Harriet. There you are, Harriet. Come on then, let's take you home. But Harriet was so sleepy and exhausted from her big adventure that she slept right through it until she got home. If you have any animals or pets in cages, take a picture and show us today. Um, Nathan used to have a hamster a long, long time ago, but the hamster died. Uh, but when we kept the hamster in the cage, we had to be very careful that the cage was always secure and safe so that the hamster wouldn't sneak away and then get hurt. Um, but we would take the hamster out of the cage to play and have fun with us. So if you have a pet at home that lives in a cage or some kind of enclosure, take a picture, share with us today, and tell us about your pet. Have a wonderful day, friends.